Hi there fellow mobile adventurers. After a few years of pondering it, I finally bit the bullet and ordered Starlink Internet for Explore Van. What made me push the order button was the release of the Starlink Mini, a portable self-contained and importantly 12 to 30 volt powered unit. So stick with us to see what our first impressions are. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. For those that don't already know, Starlink from SpaceX provide internet access using a large network of low Earth orbit satellites, meaning their coverage is better with faster speeds than 4G and 5G cellular networks. What had put us off ordering Starlink in the past were the physical size and complexity of the equipment needed and the need to semi-hack the solution to power it from 12 volts, or always use an inverter. Plus the only available tariff being a hefty £85 a month for unlimited usage. Well, as if they were listening, thanks to the new Starlink Mini, those challenges have gone. So let's get on and take a first look at it. Ordering the Mini direct from Starlink was simple and easy, and despite it quoting a two to four week delivery time, it arrived in six days. There are lots of fake suppliers around, so do be careful on purchasing elsewhere. As I mentioned in the intro, the £85 a month price tag for service previously had been off-putting, but with the introduction of their Mini Roam tariff exclusive to the Mini hardware, which gives an allowance of 50GB of data for £50, while still expensive and for a relatively small amount of data, to use the Mini as a source alongside 4G and 5G cellular, it does give more options. Interestingly, the Mini Roam tariff also allows use in motion over 10 miles an hour, which the Mobile Regional doesn't, and you'd have to pay £247 a month to do on the standard hardware. But that does also include global access. As I said, it took only six days for the surprisingly small box to arrive on our doorstep. In the box, you get the dish with a kickstand mount fitted, a pole mount, 15 metres of cable, and a mains power unit. You may be wondering, okay, that's the dish, where's the router? Well, with the Mini, everything is built into the compact and light dish. It has built-in Wi-Fi, or the ability to connect by Ethernet cable if you want to connect it to an existing router. I know the dimensions of the dish are available on Starlink's website, but it's still hard to appreciate exactly how small the dish is. Here it is with a sheet of A4 paper. On the back of the Mini, under this waterproof plug, there is an Ethernet port that would allow you to connect it to a Wi-Fi router inside your van. And this is something we'll be trying, as we plan to use it connected to our existing 5G cellular router. Once the power lead is connected, switching between the kickstand and pole mount is simple, and both are really easy to use, allowing the dish just to be popped on a flat surface or mounted to pretty much any pole you have lying around. The Starlink app talks you through exactly what you need to do to set up the dish, and it's really easy. Just to test it out, we're going to use the kickstand from a pretty enclosed garden, so we're not really sure how it will perform. It's also drizzling, which can't be a help. We've pointed it at the biggest expanse of sky, powered it up, and we can see it's using around 25 watts of power. The app then prompts you to connect to the Starlink by Wi-Fi, before confirming the orientation and getting you to change the Wi-Fi login details. You can see that we're now online, so let's do a quick sp initial speed check. So at this stage, immediately we're getting around 20 megabytes per second down and five megabytes per second up, but we know that's gonna improve as it acquires more satellites. So let's leave it for a bit and we'll retest later. Within the app, there's a vast array of statistics showing the coverage and obstructions and a really simple process to optimise the direction that the dish is pointing. For those that want it, there are more statistics on latency and bandwidth and we'll look a little later at the connection stability. You can also change settings for the snow melting function and set sleep periods to save power. 
Around an hour later, when the dish has had a chance to acquire more satellites and stabilise, we can see the performance from Starlink's own speed test has improved to around 60 megabits per second down and 12 up. But if we use the external speed test app, which is our go-to, we are actually seeing a higher performance of 137 megabits per second down and 18.5 up. The dish has now been active for over three hours, so let's take a look at its performance. In the coverage and obstructions page, we can see that it's not surprisingly showing as partially obstructed in our pretty enclosed garden. But when we look at the dropouts recorded, the vast majority are for under one second, with only four or more of more than two seconds, all of which were within the first 20 minutes of it being set up. As we're most likely to be using the Starlink Mini when off-grid, power usage is pretty important. So, to get an idea of what that will be, in this case, using the mains power unit, it has consumed just under 300 watt-hours of power in just over a 13-hour period. So that would mean it'll use approximately half a kilowatt-hour in a 24-hour period. So what we're going to do over the next few weeks is put the Starlink Mini through its paces, and we'll compile the results in our more in-depth video to share with you, which will include things like different mounting options for different scenarios, power considerations from small portable power banks and batteries to running it from your leisure battery, or even a power station. As there are some things that you do need to consider, like the voltage you use and the length of the power cable you plan to use, and we'll look at how much power it actually does use long term. We'll share our overall experience using it both in the crowds of a festival where we know cellular congestion means 4G and 5G are practically useless and out in the wild where 4G and 5G are just non-existent. We'll also see how we cope with the cheaper but limited 50 gigabyte plan and how it behaves on the move while driving. Finally, as we'll be using it alongside our existing 4G, 5G cellular router, we'll talk about the options for how to link the two together to work in tandem. So if you're not sure, if the Mini is for you, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss it. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.